Yo, y'all know what time it is, and we back with another make it's mega time uh, 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 episode. Um, we and got a new a, setup, and a new setup, and a new setup. Correct. Oh, uh, y'all can see this clearly now. Go. I can see. I can see the whole shebang clearly now. You know the big red. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, well, it doesn't have to be big red. It's just the logo. It is big red. Let's not do that. That's the red silver back right there. There's a little bit of white and black. You know, if one. we're going to talk about and then the colors. we have big red there, and then we have big red there. Anywho. Talk to me. What's how you doing on? this week? Man, fucking fantastic. Me too. Yeah. What's going on? How is everything? How I'm going to pick your brain. How is everything? It's Say pretty, it loud. It's pretty, stop. Say it loud. <laughs> 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 hey, because you look like you, 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 hey, you're wasting time on the answer. Let's you know on. what it is? It's because we're sitting different, so I have to, like, I'm not really good at making a lot of change because I'm a Capricorn, and so this is... Taking some time for an adjustment. I'm even sweating right now. I don't even sweat for this. I feel Gl- nervous. Glitter. It's like a new, a new glitter to Mariah Carey. It's, it's getting hot in here. Oh yeah, it is. It's getting hot in here. It is. Okay. Well. You Anyways, know. but my gym week has been amazing. Yeah. You know, you grow down two percent body fat again. Yeah. Um, I lost four pounds last week. Believe it or not. In a week. No, but throughout the month. Overall, gotcha. Four pounds. Um, so I'm averaging about, I would say like a pound and a half, two pounds a week. It's okay. been about three weeks. So I'm doing pretty good. Feeling good. Feeling myself, even though these damn cameras make you look 10,000 pounds heavier, but it's all right. Hey. I'm still loving it. It's a, it's a thing we have to be able to say, Hey, you know what? We're on camera. We're doing our thing and, uh, yeah. we gotta love it. It is what it is. I think it's sabotage. I think it's yeah. the producers in the back They're trying to make me look make it, Making all way. the calls. Trying to be haters. Oh man! You know it is summer. Man, we don't, hey. I'm trying to live my best Are life. Are you worried about the TikTokers? <laughs> Fuck them TikTokers! Right? <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. Dang, she said, "F you guys." Evil. First of all, the stuff that we talk about, let me just say, has no reason for somebody to call me Big Back. Ooh, and hey, you know Big Back's a thing now, right? I'm not trying to be Big Back, and my back is not that big. No, you don't have a big back. Thank you. I, I, so I, look, like, I'll say to you, like, what the, and I would tell you if you had a big back, I'm very good would. at telling people. <laughs> I know you would. <laughs> I can't but the beginning, back. the beginning of like the little clips that we post are yeah. like, I think it was about Kendrick. Yeah. What's that got to do with big backs? I don't think that has nothing to do with big backs. Nothing but like I said, I think because of the trend, big backs is a trend right now. I There's mean, a lot of big, 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 big backs out there. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just, I, I don't. Look, I don't really try to throw that word out because I'll get in trouble. The fact that your ass has a big ass back and nobody's talking about your fucking back is crazy to me. My back is shaped like the ape. That's what my back my is. My back is shaped too. I have muscles. It's a different type of back. Okay. You better leave this big back shit alone because I don't you, want to you don't want to don't leave that fucking conversation of big backs alone. I'm just I'm just saying. I know I got a big back. Uh, yeah. You know my I used to have a big back. It's getting smaller. Sorry. Right. It's getting smaller. I, I I do applaud you for that. Thank you. you. Know? But yeah, man, like it's called uh, curvy, my, y'all. Thanks. She said curvy. Thank curvy you and much. swervy. Anyway, Anyways. um but to say the least, I mean, um yeah. now my gym week's been great, phenomenal. Um, you know, just uh just doing what I do best. Yeah. Just going in there as Martel and training myself as Mega and uh you know That's good. thinking to myself like why do I do this to myself all the fucking time? That was me today. Every that time. That was me man. today. That's yeah. me today. Yeah. Like what is the point of me going in there and hurting myself? And then I looked at old pictures of myself on Facebook and I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to take my ass to the gym." What the what them ladies say though? Beauty is pain, them older ladies. Beauty oh, is beauty pain. pain. You know what I'm saying? Well, not when you got this kind of beauty. It's not that painful. But I'm just saying, it is painful, though, yeah. when you're trying to get to a certain body fat. Yes, that shit is painful. Anyways. It, it is. That is. I, I can yeah. agree with you on that. For sure. For sure. But. Yeah. Talk to me. I'm excited because we have an amazing guest today. Somebody that I know personally that has uh, worked with my my dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've met my dog, and you know he's a beautiful beast of an animal. Yeah. And um, somebody that has just became one of my amazing friends, and he is a fitness enthusiast as well, Mr. Shepard and Company himself. Can you say that again? I can't. (laughs) Say that shit again, please. I have a list. I know you do. Shepard and Company. You said it right? Uh, did I? Shepherd and Company? Yes. And 
His name is Jesus. Stop. You're making me nervous. What the fuck? <laughs> Why are yes. you doing that shit? I'm with it. Jesus Lara. He's coming on today. Let's get it, y'all. Hell yeah. This shit is bigger than me. Give me my flowers while life is still breathe. Don't smell in the glory. I taste it to free. Nothing feels better than chasing your dreams. Yeah. This shit is bigger than me. Give me my flowers while life is still breathe. Don't smell in the glory. I taste it to free. Nothing feels better than chasing your dreams. Yeah. Give them my history. Nothing compared to me. Nothing come next to me. No, no. Claiming my victories. Can't let you win with me unless you sit with us. Yeah, yeah. Give them my history. Nothing compared to me. Nothing come next to me. No, no. Claiming my victories. Can't let you win with me unless you sit with us. Yeah. Yeah, king of the table, shit on the label. Welcome to the show. Thank Hold you, on, brother. Thank you. Nothing much. Just excited to be here. It's an honor. Thank you, Vanessa, for oh, no, having of me. And thank you for having me as well. So no worries, my it's man. It's an honor to be here. And um, I'm excited for uh, apparently Vanessa told me that um, I'm here to end a debate. So end a debate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, cool. But I, 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 I think, um, yeah, well, we kind of talked about it off the camera. But I mean, um, that, that's fine. We can try and do this debate. But I'm going to tell you right now that in this debate, we're both wrong. We were both wrong. Okay. I still believe that I could be right. You know why? See, believing is not facts. You know that, right? I could always believe in myself. I'm always no, we're not talking. We're talking about a dog. But you're not talking. You're speaking facts that you Google. That doesn't mean it's factual, bro. I looked it up every single. Hey, listen, we back at it again. I'm just gonna let you guys know what's about to go right down right now. So when she's wrong, I want you guys to look her deep in her eye and her face, because we were both wrong. She just doesn't want to be wrong. I'll admit that I was wrong. I but say, she was wrong too. I'm just saying there's a possibility I could still be right because we have a professional not, here. Okay, cool. We can speak on <laughs> cool, it. Cool, cool, cool. So when, okay. when 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 we bust that out, okay. See, but the thing is, we can't do this until after the questionnaire. Okay, do the questionnaire. I'm ready. You want to do the go? That was supposed to be at the end. Oh my bad. No, let's not do the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, Jesus. We're getting yeah. off topic. Yeah. Yeah. You see what you started? <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's getting juicy though. It's getting spicy. <laughs> yeah. So hey, it's gonna man. be a good episode yeah. for sure. And it's only about dogs, bro. <laughs> right? Not yeah. even. He does a lot of other no, stuff. No, no, I want no, no. him to tell us about him. What? First of all, let me tell you how I found this cat. Uh huh. I, I call people cats. Sorry. No, for sure. Right. So yeah, uh, I just call you a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love cats. <laughs> so I was. Ha I took my dog, my Cane Corso, to a boarding for two weeks. Uh -huh. Right. That's right. And the boarding brought my, gave me my dog back, malnourished, dehydrated, just a totally different dog, right? Yeah. I had him for about five days, was acting out, showing aggression, all kinds of stuff. That. Right. I remember you told me that. And so I was like, "What do I do? What do I do?" Luckily, I fell onto his page. Uh, I reached out to him, told him my experience. He loves dogs so much. I don't even know if it's just dogs. I think he loves animals, right? <laughs> yeah. But like. He loves dogs so much that he took my dog on and like realized what was happening, what happened, and was like helping me fix the situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I came onto his page and how I got to know him. And ever since then, we've been following each other and I see how he works with dogs. He's amazing. He's super knowledgeable on it. And um, that's really important, you know, yeah, when definitely. somebody who's like a dog trainer and doesn't really know what they're doing, you can yeah. tell. Now I can tell, especially after my horrible right. mishap. But let's tell us more about you. Yeah, so um, I'm 29. I've been a full-time trainer. This year is going to be my 10th year. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, I started when I was 19. Um, right after high school, I spent a year uh, basically building clientele, uh, house sitting and dog sitting. So I actually had a really good income for being 19. And then... Um, this one client at the time, he had a couple of dogs and I took him for a walk. And then that's when I met my first mentor. Um, and then um, when I met my first mentor, he was walking like some exotic looking dogs. And so I obviously stopped him and um, he, I told him, I was, I was like, hey, like those are crazy dogs. And he was like, yeah, like I run a dog training business here. And then uh, he basically took me under his wing um, first he hired me just to watch the dogs, but then he needed the, needed the help mm -hmm. training the dogs cause he was a trainer and, um, yeah, that's how it's, how I started. And so I did four and a half years with him and then I plateaued as a trainer. Um, I basically just mastered his training techniques and, um, I was about like 24 and 25. And when you're that, you're that age, um, and you kind of plateau, um, I was living on my own too and, you know, making really good income. So I plateaued and I was kind of living on cruise control 
And when you're in that age and you plateau and you live on cruise control, like you're still really young. You have so much ambition, you know, right. to just be at a standstill somewhere. So um, I made the decision to leave that company and I found my second mentor, um, which was a military mentor. Uh, we did a lot of protection work, um, took on a lot of aggressive cases. Um, and I did aggressive cases. Yeah, aggressive cases, you know, just behavioral cases and stuff right. like that. And I did two years under his company. And then in 2020, right before the pandemic, um, I opened up my own, own company. Gotcha. And ever since then, um, I've been, what's which, which been really cool, what I've been able to show myself is that, like, um, I worked for two successful companies and I did a lot for them. Right. And right. so when I left, um, I was like, why can I do that for myself? You know, like, why can I, you know, put in all this work and do it for myself? And I'm finally at that point where I'm like, dang, like, I really am doing it for myself right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm caught, in the, like, right now I'm in the middle. Like, I'm just like, whoa. Disbelief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. yeah. So, um, and. Um, the amount of control that you have over those dogs on your videos is crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's um, it's really cool to, you know, be able to, because um, my whole big thing is that I never say no to a case. So that puts me in a position where, like, I'm working with, well, one, all different kinds. cases and yep. all different types of dogs. So um, I'm working with little chihuahuas, uh, poodles, you know, crazy, uh, you know, dogs from like Russia or, you know, like imported dogs. I'm competing now, too. So like um, it's, it's really cool to see, you know, like I'm, you know, whenever I, I like introduce myself and someone's like uh, trying to hire my services, um, I've gone used to saying like I'm a professional dog trainer. You know, before it was just dog trainer, right. but no. now I see mm-hmm. I'm like nah, like I really am that person. You know, I, Take I pride really, in that name. Type yeah. yeah, so I'm just like yeah. nah, it's it's professional, and so um, it's yeah, that's that's basically where I'm at. You know, currently um, I'm in the middle of just running my own business, and it's really tough. It's really stressful. Um, yeah, it can be. but you're yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm definitely doing it. And, um, you know, uh, there's a saying, I think it's like, um, what is it like it t- uh, to be a boss or like, you, I forget what it is. Like you play to be a boss, you like have to play a boss or something like that. Like you ha- you fake it till you make it. Is that what it no, is? No, it's something nah. about being a boss though and oh. like being stressed and stuff like that. Like, you know, but, but yeah, like essentially I'm my own boss and it's extremely like not stressful, but um, you really have to be on your toes because like yeah. if you're not on your toes on your personal life. It's gonna affect your career and, oh, and your for business sure. life. For so, sure. so I understand that a thousand percent. Yeah, a thousand percent. Just because I, I work with clients and I have my own business, so it's right. I, it's yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. People so. don't people don't understand. They think it's all fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you enjoy what you do, but they don't really understand. Like you're your own marketer. You're your own uh, every single accountant. Thing. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, and, and you know? then they, like they don't understand like the headspace that you have to yeah. have to be able exactly. to like, get through the day and the month and the exactly week, in a year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's crazy. So and that's like that. something that I would like want people to be more aware of too. Is that like. Um, there's people out there that would be like, yo, I paid you this amount of money, so I get you treat you treat you like this or like, Hail you, to or the like Hail so exactly, no. you know, and so and while I'm going through like some crazy stuff, they don't know what I'm going through, you know? And so yeah. they don't care. I know exactly. And no, so for me care. to have the composure to like pro- still be a professional um and speak to them, um, it it you know, it takes energy. It it takes yeah. energy to be able to put away what's happening what you're going through right. mentally and still talk to these people on a professional level as a dog trainer, you know? Right. So well, not only that, even if you're like, let's speak to the animals, animals feel your energy. Yeah, exactly. So let's just say you're going through something in your personal life. You still got to go and deal with 13 dogs that all need different kind of love. Cause they all, or I don't know how many dogs you train at at one time, but I'm just giving an example, but the type of breeds that you are mixing together <laughs> and still have control over yeah, it yeah, is yeah. wild because yeah. when I bought my my Connie course, so it was it wasn't like an easy decision where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go get a dog and like this is it. Like I did extensive research on this. I remember mm. I told you, yeah. I was and with me and him, we, we would have this discussions mm-hmm. about how 
the dog should be trained and stuff like that because I'm like, no, this is a particular animal. He has to be trained like this. <laughs> he needs, they like attention. They're working dogs. And it's like you and like and I kept having these debates with people because they didn't, you know, understand that different breeds acquire different things. Yeah. So can yeah, you speak 100%. on that? Yeah. So yeah, 100 um, percent. And, you know, being a, a good dog trainer, um, the more experience you have, I think that really, truly does make you into a better mm -hmm. trainer. So, like, my whole philosophy when I'm approaching a dog is that um, the recipe is there to train a dog, but the way that you apply the recipe on each dog is completely different. Yep. Um, and so, um, and the cool thing about uh, um, saying no to, uh, you know, like, not saying no to any cases, like, um, you learn from that. You know, if there's a dog that puts you in a position where you're like, damn, I'm going to have a hard time training this dog. And yeah. then you end up doing it. Well, you just became a better trainer. Exactly. You know? yeah. So, um, you know, you don't want to say no to those cases because it's going to make you a better trainer. So, but it's completely true. You like, um, you know, you're not going to start training. Um, you know, if your dog is being, doesn't have any confidence, you're going to have part. to focus on that. Or that if your part. dog is um, not being neutral around dogs, then, you know, just the, the it's a different approach to yeah. every single dog, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this is just as long as you kind of know what you're doing and you have like all these different techniques under your tool belt, mm -hmm. um, you should be straight. You should be right. straight. So let me, let, let me ask you this: like, so like seeing that, which I know because I've 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 bred dogs before. Um, I've been most of the time I've been around mostly aggressive dogs. Just as far as even the the um, the breed. You know what I'm saying? So, like, has there ever been ever been a time or a situation? You said ten years you've been mm -hmm. okay, ten years. So, have you ever like actually feared a dog? Like, damn, like going into a situation where like, yo, I don't even know. Right yeah. Now. So, actually, when I first met my first Belgian Malinois, that was when like back in like 2017, 2018. Uh -huh. um, this guy and and so uh, what's a Belgian? Can you can you Belgian Malinois? Yeah. What is yeah. It? yeah. So those are the canine uh, the canine dogs. The, they they're not like German extra. shepherds. Oh, like, they really? look like German shepherds, but like they're, they're like two point oh. <laughs> no, right? they're skinny. They're skinny oh. and uh, but yeah, uh, Belgian Malinois. They're like skinnier, more agile, way smarter. So to kind of give you an example, their teeth are sharper too, right? Are their nose pointier? Yeah. Okay. So um, this is the difference between a Belgian Malinois and a and a, 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 a like a old traditional German Shepherd. So right. there was this video where um, they put uh, a Belgian Malinois and a German Shepherd um, in the same scenario. So in this scenario, they had a room and then there was these boxes, just empty boxes that filled, like they made a little pathway of these boxes. And at mm -hmm. the end of that pathway, there was a, a decoy, a guy in the bite suit ready to take on the dog, to catch the dog. Right. So they put a German Shepherd and a Belgian Malinois in the same situation so they did this german shepherd first and obviously this german shepherd he followed the path and then went to the um uh to the decoy and the decoy caught him when they put the belgian malinois though oh, shit. the belgian malinois did not even care about the path he literally just went ran straight through the boxes and went straight to the decoy mm. so um that's like the biggest difference between those two dogs the belgium when i first met my belgium uh, a, a belgian malinois um, it was just really reactive. Like it was just barking in front of my face, and um, but it wasn't aggressive because that's what the, those dogs do. You yeah. Know? So um, protective, protective. yeah, but it was my first time encountering something like that, and yeah. and um, at the time uh, in 2017, uh, I was dealing a lot with uh, what's called pet training. So I was taking a lot of dogs, and I was essentially turning them into really good pets. Mm -hmm. So you really we do. You know, we didn't really get like working dogs like a Belgian Malinois. Mm -hmm. And so we got this dog and um, this dog was just not like this dog wasn't a good su like suit for our training program at the time because it was just a, such a high caliber dog, you know. Right. So, um, yeah, that dog, when I first met that breed, I was like, whoa, like <laughs> this is just next level. Like this is crazy, you know, not crazy, but. This is just next level, essentially. And then so when I met my second mentor, that's where I got familiar with uh, the Belgian Malinois and just working dogs yeah. in general. But um, right now, like, if is there anything that kind of scares me? Um, no. What kind of scares me is just, like, the accidents that can happen, yeah. you know? As so, far as? Um, you know, like, 
um, I don't know, like a dog breaking its toe or, you know, like, um, you know, breaking a bone or, you know, if I'm dealing with an aggressive case, um, I definitely don't want that dog to be doing any damage to like anybody else. It's you know? dog, yep. Yeah. So, yeah. um, have you, what I mean, is, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, um, um, no, what I was meaning was like, like, cause like I met a dog, I met a dog, like when I was breeding a dog and I was breeding a dog with one of my dogs. Right. And that dog was like, when I first met him, like it was huge. It was a chocolate, it was a chocolate pit. I don't know if you ever heard of those. Chocolate. It, so it, it was just huge, bro. Like this dog hand was probably, I got big hands, bro. That dog's hand, like that dog's, it looked like a lion's mitt. Like that's how big that damn dog's mitts were. Like it was huge. Like his bone structure was just, everything was just big. Like, and it probably stood about as tall as a Great Dane, but it was a pit. It was a massive breed. And so like, but like he was in the cage and I was just like, the way he was just moving, it was like just watching something out of a movie type thing. And I was like, dog, I'm not scared of the dog because like, I'm, I mean, I'm scared that I'm not, I'm scared of what might happen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, dog, like, I know what you're capable of doing, but I also know I can't just let you do it. So, it's like, you know, being in that situation with a dog that's not mine, that's what I'm asking. Like, certain situations like that. Mm, maybe when, like, I go do group classes, um, that's probably when I'm, like, have to be on my toes around certain dogs. Um, like, recently, um, I was uh, with one of my fellow dog trainers. His name is Chris. He invited me to a group class. And there, um, there's these dogs called alibis, and these dogs are freaking huge. Like I'm talking about huge. I don't know if you guys know what a Caucasian Shepherd is mm -hmm. or a, a Kangol. Um, those those dogs are like meant to protect livestock, and they're actually here in Moreno Valley. <laughs> That's the crazier part. <laughs> and huh. um, and so uh, um, when when you see those dogs, that dog, if that dog gets you. That dog has a bite power that will literally rip your limb off in one clean bite. Like, I'm not over-exaggerating. If you see this dog, even when you have a, a sleeve, um, you can still feel the power of this dog's bite. You know, so those sleeves don't look that thick. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was had like some type of sandbag or something that they wear. No, so I like, think does not look. No, like it's so there's protect. different types. There's just there's, there's different types, but there's like some heavy duty ones. You know, so even when, when you're wearing those, you can still feel the pressure of the bite, and um, you get bruised, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you get yeah, bruised. You get yeah, and then if you don't, if you don't catch the dog correctly. Um, you can tear an, a ligament on your knee, yeah, or you I know, seen that. yeah, like, because that's like a that. big ass. Yeah, um, so. I seen that. Uh, you know who did it? Uh, Tony Yayo. <laughs> uh. Tony Yayo. They put him in a room with a, with a dog. Hey, yo, he almost lost his mind, bro. No. He said, "Get the dog!" Like, and Fifty was just in the back, just laughing. But it was a funny well, was situation. It the the, the um, what's that guy who used to prank people? Punked. Was it on punk? I don't know. I don't remember who it was. Nah, I, I don't remember what it was. But I was watching it probably like a couple weeks ago, and I was like, "Yo, that is funny." That's like something 50 would do. Yeah, they put him on there. It was crazy <laughs> to see that shit. But so, yeah. Oh, no. What is the craziest experience you've had with a dog? Like where it's like, oh, actually, no, let me rephrase that question. What is the worst experience you've had with a dog? To Pro where? To where what? Your life was in danger. Probably my most recent injury on my hand that I got like seven weeks ago. I, um, I was working on this case um, and... Um, this these people um i can't really say too much about the situation because like i have to like and i respect stuff. my clients yeah, private, yeah, yeah. privacy and like um the people who got involved in it but um basically what happened was um this king german shepherd uh, so there's german shepherds and then there's king german shepherds mm -hmm. king german shepherds are freaking huge like 140 pounds okay. yeah and so these people they um they rescued the, the german shepherd um it had a bad pass it was already aggressive it was abusive like it got abused oh, and so um uh, like we that. met up at the park and uh the dog just got triggered um by what was going on and then <clears throat> um the client uh just lost control of the dog and the dog got loose and it ran towards a group of people. And unfortunately um, it involved those people in the situation. And then I went and I calmed the dog down. And so when I went and I confronted the dog, um, I got in between uh, me and those people that got involved. I got in between them. And um, that's when the dog redirected towards, towards me and he got me one good time on my hand. And it was fucking uh, crazy. I guess it was a crazy bite, 
but um, it bit me one good time, and then like you could see like the inside of my hand basically, and it did nerve damage. Um, so it obviously affected my life um, in a permanent way, and um, you know, but it really affected me as a dog trainer, not so much like as a physical like human being, because when I look at the situation. Um, I there's a lot of things I'm like, dang, I wish like we could have done differently, you know. Right. Mm. So, so you learn from it. Yeah. I mean, that's all you really it's could do, yeah. essentially. Had yeah. to have that experience. Yeah. So, yeah. so that experience was um, um, I don't think it was traumatizing um, to me, at least. Uh, but, you know, um, it did teach me a lot, you know. Right. So, um, yeah, once. Uh, once I got that dog under control, um, I had to take myself to the hospital at the time. So, um, yeah. That's another one of those things where you're you're going through your own life situation. <laughs> yeah. And you still got to go home and make sure the dogs are right out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, but, you know, I'm just grateful that yeah. um, I was that type of person of like, you know what? I got this injury. I got to keep on doing what I got to keep on doing. And it, it, honestly, I was like, I was bedridden for probably like um, two or three days and then um, uh, I took myself to the gym. I fucking went to the gym. I feel that one, bro. <laughs> I, went, I, 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 I went against the doctor's note. Like, I wrapped up my my hand, made it super, like, make sure no bacteria was going to get in there. And I was just basically in denial, essentially. I'm like, I don't care. Like, I, I, like I'm not going to let this injury, like, make me into, like, this person who I think, like, you know, like, it wants me to be, you know, like. So I just couldn't just come. I it was like almost like if I was in denial and I was just like, nah, like I don't care. Like, I don't care if I have this huge fucking cut on my hand, you know, like I really don't <laughs> care. I really don't care. I'm going to be the mom here and say that I do not agree with that method. <laughs> Fuck that. Right. I'm exactly. that fucking guy, <laughs> could, I'm just being a mom. I'm just saying like okay. that could have got infected. You make sure Man, you follow you doctor's got, orders. You, you got to say like you got to feel better. Like I think a lot of times like there's been plenty of times like I've done some shit, man. And I'm just like, fuck, I got to go. I got I got to go. Yeah, exactly. I got to go. It it's really is like me, that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I get it. I yeah. And saying. you know what? Like to me, it when I felt that way, it was kind of, that was me kind of hitting the bottom. Yeah. That was like me, like kind of hitting the bottom and, and being like making the decision of like, Nah, because like, I, think, <laughs> I think you started feeling yourself, right? Going to that that yeah, that I started, place. I started, yeah, well, yeah, well, so you, yeah, that's I, what you did to dig yourself out. Exactly. So that um, leads me to my next question, and you know, I'm big on mental health. I think we're all aware here. Um, is dealing with so many different um, personalities in your business, dealing with so many animals, right? So you're you're saying that fitness is your way of dealing with your mental health, right? Mm -hmm. So how has that, how, tell us about your fitness journey because, you know, I see you go to the gym a lot now and I'm proud of you. I Thank just you. want you to say that. Thanks, yeah. I just want to say that I'm very proud of you. Um, and I appreciate the message that you sent me in regards to my fitness journey. <laughs> so yeah. that's dope. But let's speak on that. Yeah. So I heavily believe that in order for me to be the best trainer that I can be, I have to take care of myself. Like I have to be, yep. you know, in good health, I have to, you know, make sure I got my responsibilities right, my priorities right. And um, it wasn't until maybe I was like 26 that I realized that. I was Take like, some time. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's when I first started my fitness journey because I was really, really skinny. I was skinny, but I was like skinny fat. I had a belly. And, <laughs> I, and so like um, – uh, that's when my fitness journey started. And then when I really made that same connection was um, when I first started my business as well. So the gym became a, a big part of like, you know, go to the gym so you can be a better version of yourself. And right. being a better version of yourself is going to make you become a better dog trainer. And it's very true because, you know, like um, I, I went mm -hmm. uh, and I actually um, just a few weeks ago, I spoke in front of a group of high school kids and they were already going to college. They were going to go to college and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I was telling them that, like, uh, it really is you versus you. All like, the that's the big, like, that was the best advice someone has ever given to me. Yeah. You know, it really is you versus you, you know. So just as long as you're coming on top of that battle, um, you're going to be a better 
you know, brother, you're going to be a better family member, you're going to be a brother's son, you're going to be a better friend, you're going to be a better, you know, to me, dog trainer, yeah. better dog owner. Parent. So a parent, everything. essentially. So yeah. everything starts with you. So like, if I'm not taking care of myself, um, then my company is going to suffer. And yep. so that's when I realized that I need to take a vacation. Because once um, I do start talking to my clients with no filter, um, that's when I'm like, Okay, I need to I need to back back up and rejuvenate essentially because yeah. it, it gets to that man, point. Yeah, man, listen, dog. I'm in corporate America. I do that shit all the time. <laughs> it listen, gets to that bro. point. Like, I've, I've, it's only it's gone to that point like twice um, recently. So like I just have no filter, and um, and yeah, that's how it is, yeah. you know. Um, and I, I and I'm aware of like that's not how it's supposed to be. I need to be a professional, you know. Right. And you can so. still be professional and Sometimes. have no filter. <laughs> guess what? Yes, uh -huh. yes. I, I work with people, bro. Like some people need it. I work with <laughs> clients all fucking day, bro. Yeah. And I'm gonna say what the fuck I gotta say to you because that's how you need to hear it. You yeah. Know what I'm saying not in the disrespectful way, but in a way where it's like, okay, look, check this shit out. You need to fucking cut it out. Like, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Like, up, that, that, and that's how you have to be sometimes. I mean, I think you know what you know. Just growing up as an individual, like you know, and going through my emotions in life and having people that were over me, rather be my parents, coaches, whatever it may be. Like, there's some people that you can talk to just like, hey, man, you should go and do that over there. Oh, hey, sweetheart, you should go do that over there. Or, hey, you could do it. Hey, you could do it. Then there's some motherfuckers you got to, hey, you fucking need to get off your fucking ass right now. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, like go do your fucking shit. Like, stop playing around. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, stop being a, stop being a shithead. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, and I believe in sometimes, like, you do got to talk with that type of force mm -hmm. to some people, some pets, like, I have dogs. Like, you know what I mean? Like, bro, it's not like I'm professional or not. Like, I do believe, like, because you know yourself. You know your heart. Mm -hmm. You know where it's at. So regardless of how you come out, I think you're always going to have that, like, be you. I, I tell everybody, when I first started training her, bro, like, be you. Any client will tell you, I'm always telling you, be you, because I'm going to be me. A thousand percent. With no disrespect, but at the same time, you know, and I'm handling it professionally. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, And man. I think that even, like, you guys as business owners and me being in corporate America is that, not everybody's for you. So yeah. and not all money is good money. So yeah, sometimes exactly. yep, yep. sometimes that promotion ain't worth it. Sometimes yeah. that client is just not for you. Like, like some people are just gonna make you work, work, work. Yes. And it's like I'm putting all I had to take a break. She'll tell yeah. you I had to take a break at one point in time for putting so much energy into people. Yep. And I had to step away from people. I had to lower my energy in the room because yep. at the end of the day, what was going on was is that I'm pouring all of this energy into these people and I'm forgetting about me exactly exactly and yeah. i got fam i got kids yeah and it's, i got things to do yeah. like and it's just like fuck bro like so yeah you have to take care of you take that fucking vacation bro. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I'm, i am i will take that I motherfucking will. vacation yeah and, so. and live it up to you know what I'm saying? Yeah. you deserve it like I, I, I tell people that all the time take your time man yeah and then yeah. It, you're absolutely right about like um being aware of of uh, basically toxic money and toxic clients. Yes. Yeah, yes. And when you become aware of that, um, you get confident at saying no to people. Yeah. You know? So I don't, I don't, the only reason I would say no to a case is because of a person, not because of a dog. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Animals so, are beautiful. Yeah, exactly. And I'll straight, I'll tell them straight up. I'll be like, I'm sorry, but no, I'm not the trainer for you. I can recommend yeah. some trainers. And your but, attitude is probably why your dog is acting fucking crazy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, um, yeah. So now, and, and, you know, everybody has a dog, you know, so like, the the world is just gonna keep going, you know. Exactly. Like you're gonna keep on getting uh, uh, clients and whatnot. So, yep. um, you know, being aware of toxic money and toxic clients is huge. huge. Yeah, right. it's very it's huge. Time. And then you're like, okay, yeah, these are the people that I have to stay away from, and the money's not even worth it. It's not, you know. It's so, nice. and then like my time could be more valuable to somebody else, you know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you're very true. Like you're very right about that. Very yeah. right. About that. So check it out, man. I came up with some questions about this. See, I don't want to say this until we had this debate. <laughs> but you said something. You said something. I already something. know what he said. You said something, bro. So I'm going to go into my phone real quick. I got a little questionnaire real quick. I'm going I'm to I'm um, test your... Uh, hey, Zeus, remember yeah. who brought you here? <laughs> you said what now? <laughs> Nothing. Hey, hey, hey. Listen, so it's, it's pretty much, we, you know, we're going to question all of our, uh, our our guests that come on the show. Uh, and it's just, they're all multiple choice. Yeah, no you know problem. what I'm saying? So uh, we just, I'm going to just ask you a few questions. So... You ready? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, for sure. So what type of dog was Cujo? 
Hold on, don't say nothing yet. I haven't even seen that movie. Oh, was that okay, husky? so you can guess. Was it a husky? Not hell. Uh, no. Malamute? No, no, hold on. No, you can, I'm going to give you some, I'm gonna give you some uh, answer, uh, multiple choice, right? It was a St. Bernard, a Rottweiler, or a German Shepherd. I could have. You could phone a friend. <laughs> no, no, no. St. <laughs> Bernard, Rottweiler, or German Shepherd? St. Bernard, Rottweiler, German Shepherd. It can't be a Rottweiler. Hey, you know what's crazy? The whole time I thought it was, but it's no, not. It's not. It can't, I it don't wasn't. think it's a St. Bernard either. Because I remember watching it when it's I was Beethoven. a kid. Beethoven. You can't mess yeah, up Beethoven. It has to be a German Shepherd. Beethoven is one of the greatest movies ever. Nope. Oh, what is it? It was a St. Bernard. Oh, it's St. Bernard. It wow. was a St. Bernard, bro. That's so weird. No, it's not a St. Bernard. I, I have a client who oh, has a husky, you, you Google and his it. name is Cujo. Come on. Yeah, his name was Cujo. St. Bernard named Cujo. Pull it up. <laughs> Pull it up. Pull it up, dog. Hey, hey. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I feel who, like... What was Cujo? C U J O. Nobody cares about Cujo, man. Well, it's not like like about, it's it's like about Beethoven. Choice. Come on now. Beethoven is a great ass movie. He was. He was a St. Bernard. I didn't even know that. The only reason I remember because I watched Shepherd. it the other day. I watched Cujo? a couple a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, is it on right. Disney Plus? Yeah. yeah. Let me see it. Is but it I thought like it was a Rod Rally because how bloody he was with his ears. But I remember watching when I was a kid. It doesn't even look like a St. Bernard. Oh, hey, yeah, it does. Yeah, bro, it's it tripping. Right. All right, well, look, check it out. Here's the next question. So, here we go. This is going to be fucking great. I love it. Oh, my All right, gosh. look. <laughs> what dog has the strongest bite force? In my God. Oh, can I? Oh, my bad. Jesus. <laughs> God, bro. Saint, uh, look, not St. Bernard, my bad. An uh, English Mastiff. Boo. A Kangle oh. or a Kang Corso. Kane Corso. So by... Uh, I said bite force. So from number one to number three, it's the Kangol, the Kane Corso, and then it's the Mastiff. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, Kangol. Number one in the world. That's yeah. Kangol is the number one in the world. Yeah, so th those are the same dogs <laughs> yeah. um, that um, kind of like are the alibi. Those yeah. dogs that I'm telling you that um, are here in Rena Valley. Um, those dogs, when you see them... I've seen them before. Yeah, you when you see them, the homie has a farm. I've it's seen it's again. like um, it's just different. Yeah. You, it's just a different caliber. It's like, you know, like you're. It's like another animal essentially. So I've uh, only seen. I like follow, somebody, it's like some shit you don't usually see on a regular. No, basis. you don't. Like no, somebody's yeah. backyard, yeah. right? I yeah, followed no. a page. I follow a page of a guy who owns one, and he does all kinds of cool tricks with with that dog. But that's the only. That's as much as I know about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here, third question, last one right here, right? What is another name for the German Shepherds? Hold on. A, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right. You might know how to pronounce it better than me. Alistain? The Alistain? The Herding Dog? Or Ren 1010? Now, I just added that Ren 1010 in there, but you know, it might be it might be the right answer, too. I think I said Alistain. I'm going to go with the first one because that sounds German. Yeah, it's the first one. Yeah. That's another name for it. My yeah. guy. Hey, you got it. Yeah. Good okay, job. Cool. Yeah, man. So, you know, we just uh, had to check those little questions out. You know, we got to test his, uh, his <laughs> shit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? See so where he really at with it. You I'm, know what I'm saying? Know, and that, and that, that bite force one, like, I was like, no. there. I say, because I was watching, see, what happened was I was on TikTok, right? And it was showing all the dogs with the bite force, uh, with the with the biggest bite or whatever. Okay. And my dog came up. Well, <laughs> well they look, so they never even put the kangle on there. It was 10 dogs and they didn't put the Kangol on there. That's why I went to Google because I'm like, hell no. Nah. There's too many different types of dogs in the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I went and I checked out. I went on Google. But they put the press up before the came. They put the press canary. That's what, how, you, how do you say that? that, that I, don't, I don't know how the pronunciation. full pronunciation is, but I know it's, it's Pressa for sure. I just call it Pressa because that yeah. sounds dope as hell. Pressa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they put the Pressa at number one. The King Corso at number two, um, but they put like there was a they put a, a mastiff. What's the the big furry dog? It looks like a like I don't know. It looks like a lion. Like a well, it kind of looks like a chow chow. That's a German. Not, that like uh, a, um, no, a it's uh, um, so it's actually uh, that same dog. I believe it's uh, used to make the King German Shepherd because the hybrid of a King German Shepherd is two dogs. So it is a shepherd then. Uh, yeah. Okay, so they put that one actually before the press. My bad, I messed up. They put that one before the press and the King Corso. Mm. But, you don't know. but well, anyway. Well, the thing about, so like the thing about the internet. Um, Thank you. Speak and, on it. And uh, Speak on it's, it, a very, it's a very inter top, interesting topic. And it's something that I wish people uh, knew more about mm -hmm. is that 
um, you have to take everything on the internet for like a grain of salt. You get fabricated, like Thank you. you get some little fabricated information. Yeah, sometimes. for sure. You know, yeah. and that's what everything. Yeah, that's and right. exactly. Yeah, that's what I was like. My like that's where I was going at too. You know, like um, that's with everything. You know, so and it's really sometimes it's dangerous like to look up things like on. That's the why internet. I don't look up no uh, medical shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've died like three times already. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I got two weeks to live. No, but yeah, for sure. Like I, that, and that's why I googled it so many different different ways and different like for, for the names. I'm like, nah, because if I go in here and they give me the wrong information, I'll be like, we don't look stupid. Dude, fuck, I just studied on here. Like, <laughs> nah. So yeah, I had to look at it a few times, but okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. So we do this close to every end of the episode where we um, ask you to ask us some questions, get to know us, you know? So feel free. You can ask him a question, me a question, both of us a question, whatever you want. So I want to ask both of you guys a Mm -hmm. question. Um, As a fellow gym enthusiast, um, right now that you guys are working or working out the way that you guys do, um, what's your goal longevity? Like, do you guys still see your guys yourself with the same goals that you guys have now? Or like, are you guys doing anything right now that will set you up for success later on in the fitness world? Like, you know, because obviously as we get older, we can't work Mm -hmm. out the way that we do, you know? So like uh, my question to you is to you guys is like, what do you think, you know, like, are you guys doing something like, you know, like what you guys need to do for like longevity wise or like, what do you, where do you guys see, you know, you know, yourself like, like, I hear you. I hear you. Um, you want to go first? You want me yeah, to go? I can go first. Go ahead. <laughs> Beauty people are. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um, for me, again, it's not no secret. I am a bodybuilding, um, soon to be bodybuilder, I guess. I'm not even there yet. But um, my goal is to be in, in a show. Um, and once I hit that goal, my goal is to be at the best fit, have my body to it its full potential fitness wise, and then just maintain it. To the, to the day I die. And the reason um, that's important to me is because I have, you know, I know my body and I know like at being 20, 25 to 30 and having back problems, like that was a big deal for me. So I don't want to have back problems when I'm 50 because mm-hmm. I'm tall. Mm-hmm. And being tall, I have, you know, knee problems and back, back problems, neck problems. And so that's one of my like big, big goals for being old <laughs> just make sure that I have the most healthiest body internally and externally um, that I can maintain to the day I die so I don't see myself not being in the gym ever that's good um it's just a part of my life now and I made amends with it and it sucks sometimes <laughs> I, some days I wake up and I'm like you know before the podcast I was like I had an emo face today man <laughs> you know and that happens to me a lot you know no, yeah, I, I have you depression episodes because i'm a woman and we go through hormonal issues and shit and um and that's tough but if i'm not in the gym that shit can put me into a dark place and so i have to be in the gym every day and i gotta call him like, get the fuck up <laughs> yeah yeah he's done that he's hell's done yeah. that that's a friend right there he's, that's he's friend. That. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hell's yeah he's done that it's my, my partners if i ain't talked to you in like three four five days and I ain't seen you doing shit, I'm going to call you and I'm going to check you. Like, hey, yeah. Get the fuck up. Yeah, nah, he's yeah. done that. Get that yeah. bullshit out, man. Believe it or not, he's done that. Exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay. It's all love, though. Like, it's all love. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So for me, bro, um, my, my goal, I've, I've probably hit everything possible as far as when it comes to fitness. The only thing I haven't done is gotten old, old. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm. So my goal is to... Obviously, I'm not going to be lifting how I lift now. So what I do now is I lift with a lot of resistant bands. And if you see a lot of guys, like, I don't know if your pops worked out or you got uncles that worked out back in the day. They got so many messed up injuries, bro, mm-hmm. because they just never took care of themselves the correct way. My goal is to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. I've done everything else fitness-wise. So I know if I'm taking care of myself, rather it be me eating right, you know, um, lowering down on the weight, making sure I have good, great mobility still, mobility. Mm-hmm. Um, making sure that I'm still like I could, I got a good cardiovascular system. Thanks, you know man. what I'm saying? Like all those things in my mental space too, because you got to have that mental space. Yeah. If that mental space mm-hmm. do not work, that 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 physical space is not going to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, those are my goals as far as like you know. Right now, I just love doing what I'm doing, man. I love helping people. Um, I love uh, I love I love just going into the gym and just seeing like the the aura. You know what I'm saying? And then. 
you know, walk out, you know, walk in and fuck shit up and walk right back out. Hell you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, and then, like I said, like, you know, 10 years from now, I will still be doing the same fucking thing with the same fucking mentality. Now, will I be lifting the same? Fuck no. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't. It's, 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 it's inevitable. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, my goal is to stay doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So that's mine. So let me ask you this. Like, um, are there like any exercises that kind of like put you in a position where you're like thinking ahead or are you just more focused on like now? Like, like, um, is there anything that you can exercises or like, you know, I'm just like, maybe, you know, I don't know, like physical therapy. I don't know. Like, I'm just asking like, Oh, hell yeah. Like, cause, uh, yeah. So like chiropractor, chiropractor once a month or (laughs) sometimes twice a month. I I do resistant training people. Listen, I'm going to speak to the camera on this one. Like, so resistant training will save you for later. That's awesome. It's straight up. Like people don't understand, like go get you some bands, keep them in your bag. Mm -hmm. Um, use those bands. If anybody knows me, they will tell you like this motherfucker. I will warm up with bands. I would. I don't care because yeah. it's not about always the fucking weight. Like I'm yeah. already strong as shit. Like I don't. I don't need to. I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. I care about my joints and my mobility. Fucking yeah, working when I'm when later on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I care about. So yeah, them bands, bro. I don't know if you use them now, but make sure you get you a pair. No, it's actually funny you mentioned that because um, my friend. Um, he tore his ACL and he rehabilitated himself and he was praising the bands. He was yeah. praising bands, the bands, bro, bands and everything. Bands, bands, so. bands and make them dance. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, seriously. So Straight that's up. good. Now, that's kind of what I wanted to know, like, cause um, lately I've been like, you know, like seeing like memes, like, Oh, like uh, a four year old, um, when a four year old sees, another four-year-old, like, working out, like, if they're 20s. And then, like, it's a Conor McGregor, like, me and me, like, oh, I messed up in the head, too, you know? And so, like, um, you know, like, obviously, you know, when you're 40 and you're working out like you're 20, you know, that's not the best, you know, for your, leg ligaments and your joints and, you know, like, I mean, great, if you can do that, sure, at 40, but, like, you know. I think I, a lot of people can do it. I just, I just don't think it's necessary. I'm one of those guys. Right? Yeah. But the reason why, like people ask me all the time, I'm 41, bro. Mm-hmm. I'll say it, I'm 41. He's you know almost 50. Stop playing with me, dog. <laughs> but anyway, I'm 41. And the thing about it is, like I tell people, in my 20s, I couldn't, I, I, I never was able to hit my potential because I'm partying, hanging out, not sleeping, yep. doing this, doing that, running the streets, you know what I'm saying? Rather be me going to school, college, whatever, uh, hanging out with buddies, you know, going to the bar, mm-hmm. um, chicks, you know, all that stuff back then, like that'll keep you up and not into your moment. Mm-hmm. And you go to the gym and you don't, you have that good young energy just so you still doing it. But when you get this age, you know, you think like, okay, cool. I got to get my sleep. Mm-hmm. I got to drink my water. Heck I can't yeah. go drink on Tuesday, Wednesday, college night. <laughs> I can't go fuck around with this freak over here. <laughs> I can't go do all of these things. Like, it's not in the bag. Like, you feel me? I got to make sure my kids is good. Home is yeah. good. Um, I got to make sure uh, so many things are in place. Business is good. So the recovery stage is like, yo, make sure I'm getting my sleep, make sure I'm drinking my water, make sure I'm eating my fruits and my vegetables, making sure that I'm getting a recovery things like uh, uh, massage therapy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Making sure I'm getting going to the chiropractor, making sure that all those things go into play because if you don't, that's how you age faster, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Straight up, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know, that's crazy. But we're wrap, We're going to wrap up this episode by thanking you so much for being here. Thank you, guys. Thank it was guys. so much fun. Yeah. Gotta have you back so we can talk about more uh, kind of corsos because that's the best animal in the world. Yeah, but <laughs> I, would love, I would love to be back. That would yeah. be awesome. But um, go ahead and uh, send us off, man. Y'all know what it is. It's it's another great time. episode. It's mega time, and we Sorry, out. I did Peace. that way too fast. Let's do that again. Do it again. Hold on. Do it again. <laughs> do okay, it again. yo, check it out. We're gonna make it short and simple. Yeah. It's mega time, and we out. Peace. Peace. Peace.